Okay, my name is Evan Scheibel, and in this quick tip video, we're going to be taking a look at kind of the the secret to a good explosion. Now, we're not going to create an explosion from scratch in this video, but rather what I'm going to do is take one I've already created and show you the secret to making it look good. Now, it's not hard to make an explosion. Uh, all you do is you animate a few properties, and there you have it. You, you've got an explosion. But a lot of times, what I see in people's demo reels and in thing in like test scenes that people that people do um, I see the, an explosion where it's supposed to be big it's supposed to be very large in scale but yet it, it doesn't behave like it's large uh, so uh, in other words what you see is an explosion that's supposed to be you know half the size of a mountain but it it's, looks like it's a miniature because you know you it's just nothing that, to it, it no <coughs> the, the speed is just constantly fast uh, and, and it just doesn't look quite right. And, and a lot of the times, the people who made it can't even pinpoint what I'm talking about. So in this quick tip, I want to show you what I'm talking about. Now, in order to, to simulate scale, um, the best way to do that is to, is to really, really think about how something will behave speed-wise. And what I mean is, the larger something is, the slower it tends to move. Um, so if you have a large, huge explosion, sure it starts out fast, um, but as it grows and as the smoke plumes up, it, it begins to slow down. And what, here, let me demonstrate what I mean. This is kind of the final, not the final product uh, completely finished, but when it comes to the animated properties, this is kind of what I mean. So let me just play. Let me make sure that this is not on real time. Okay, and you can see how that slows down. And uh, we'll do this one more time here. It starts out fast, you've got the big explosion, and then it slows way down. And you've got kind of the lingering fire down at the bottom, and the smoke just kind of slowly kind of plumes away. Okay, and the way I accomplished that was actually fairly simple, but um, don't mistake the simplicity uh, for being <laughs> overlooked, because as simple as this might be, most people don't even, you know, understand what's going on. Um, so, Anyway, let me just really fast show you um, a, a quick, easy way to make your explosion look 100% better. Um, now, in order to get the explosive effect at the beginning, all I've done is animate the expansion. So from about frame 5 to 10, I animate the expansion up to 6, and then from frame 6 to about 20, I animate it back down to 2. So that's and that's how you get that explosion that explosive feel and then in the object source the way to get the fire to dwindle out and just to look like some smoldering left over is just animated the fuel right here you'll see a keyframe pop up at frame 20 and then at frame 30 uh, I keyframed it down to zero so it's pretty simple stuff there but in order to get that to slow down and and uh, to really act as if it's huge. Um, the simplest way to go about that is to animate your velocity dampening property. Um, so what I did is at frame 20, when the explosion's about at its climax, I hit a keyframe. Uh, and at this point the velocity dampening has been at 0.3 the entire time. Um, now what that does is it just uh, it's kind of like a drag operator in particle flow. What it does is it just applies a drag uh, to everything in the in the simulation. So it's it's, it's almost like it's fighting against uh, that property. So it, the higher the velocity dampening, the more the simulation has to fight to move faster. Uh, you could think of it that way. Uh, so from from frame zero to frame twenty. I have velocity dampening at 0.3, and then when, when we get up to frame 30, I've animated that up to 0.5. Now, it might not seem like a whole lot, um, but let me show you kind of what this does in effect here. Uh, so I'm going to bring this down to zero right now. 
and then at the beginning zero. So now we have zero all the way here and then it animates up to five, uh, which honestly is how it should have been anyway. Um, that pr would have given us the best uh, look. So I'm going to simulate this again really fast and you're going to see kind of this simulate through and what it looks like. And now you can see all those animated properties really take effect as this simulates. You can see the expansion animated, how that does it. You could see the difference off in the animated velocity dampening because at the beginning of the simulation you saw there was a, a quite a large flame. Now that uh, can be taken care of in a lot of different ways, um, but we're not really going to focus on that here. You should see a much more dramatic change. Uh, in this one than in the previous one. Uh, the reason for that is we animated from 0 to 0.5 rather than 0.3 to 0.5. I'm going to stop this right now and now you can see the explosion and then it really slows down. And you can see when we've got that switch here you can see right at this where the switches from the old simulation or from the new one to the old one you can see the difference in where they are. Okay, so we've got the explosion there and it slows and looks nice and large there. Um, now this might seem insignificant but in the long run and um, I'll show you a render here. In in the end of things when you have your your final shot there and, and that makes all the difference in the world uh, because even though it seems insignificant um, it's not Th this uh, can be the difference of making your scene look like a miniature scene um, to making it look real so don't don't mistake this as something super insignificant um, Okay, my name is Evan Scheibel. I hope this quick tip was helpful. Um, I know there's not a whole lot of Theme Effects users. This is quite a niche tool, uh, but if you use this uh, this this plugin, take advantage of this this technique and this this little tip here because, like I said, it's super important and it can make or break your effect. Uh, so look forward to the next quick tip, the next videos. Uh, stay tuned here at CG Tools Plus. My name is Evan Scheibel, and thanks for watching.